Well, as a little boy, I was fascinated by people who were able to function well under difficult circumstances. So Rambo and Die Hard weren't really the stories I could relate to. They were the stories of real people, like the story of Viktor Frankl. He was a survivor of the horrors of the concentration camps in World War II. And he lost his father, his mother, and his wife in there. But despite all this, he came to the conclusion that situations can be inhumane, inhumane, painful, but life still is potentially meaningful. Um, so if I look at the future that, and what it has in hold for us, I'm pretty convinced that we have beautiful things ahead, but also some pretty challenging things. Like if I look at the, let's say, the technology, the, the environmental, the geopolitical challenges that we face, the way we live on this earth will change dramatically in the next couple of years. So my question is, are we resilient enough to face the future? Because people like Viktor Frankl, or people like friends of mine, a little, that was a little bit earlier this, this year, two friends of mine had uh, spinal cord injuries, but they now fully embrace life again, but also the story that we heard today of, of Hein and Mirella, I mean, those are stories of people that have one thing in common, and that's resilience. And my question is, are we resilient enough to face the future? Because if I look at the enormous increase of people that suffer from stress, burnouts, and depressions, and the staggering amount of medication we take for that, I'm having serious doubts. And my idea is, let's make resilience the new drug that will help us to become more future-proof without the risk of an OD. And the nice thing is that you can work on your resilience very easily. I mean, the only thing you have to do is work on acceptance, self-worth, self-reliance, building a network of friends, making sure you develop your talents. But doesn't this sound a little bit simple and maybe a little bit naive and cliché to you? I mean, we know all these things, but sometimes we have a little bit of a hard time of putting it into practice. It's almost as if Every now and then we need to experience a devastating struggle in life to really grasp this. Well, here's my struggle. It began on the day that my lovely wife Jacqueline went on a day shopping with my beautiful daughter, 20-year-old daughter, Sana. And during the day I got all kinds of text messages saying how much fun they had and how much clothes, how much clothes they bought. And in one case that uh, one of the salespersons in the store said, you have the same size. So they were like having uh, loads of fun. And later that day, I got a few text messages saying that, okay, we'll first grab a bite in the city and afterwards we come home. So it was a Friday night. I had dinner with, uh, together with my son. And after that, he went off to his friends. So it was a Friday night. I was in my favorite chair. I had the remote control in my right hand. I had a glass of wine in my left hand. Family was happy. I mean, life was like a sunny day. Then around 9.30, the front door bell rang. And I found it a little bit strange because um, I expected the girls home, but they would come round back. So I went to the front door, and I opened it, and I saw two female police officers standing there. And their faces didn't bode well. So one of them asked, are you Richard de Hope? I said, uh, yeah. Um, is your wife's name Jacqueline, and do you have a, a daughter named Sana? I said, yeah. Well, sir, unfortunately, we have to tell you that your wife and your daughter just have had a car accident, and your wife, with a severe trauma in the hospital, and your daughter did not survive. I was like, if I just hold my hand, if I just close my eyes, then this nightmare will be gone. But when I open them again, it continued. And apathetically, I started walking through my house. And I was overwhelmed by a tsunami of terrible thoughts and emotion. And at some point, I don't know what, I found myself back in the living room. And I saw one of the police officers standing there. She opened her arms and she said, Ah, oh, come over here. And the only reason I share this story with you is that after we lost our lovely daughter, 
my wife, my son, and I, we work very hard on our resilience. And I can tell you that with ups and downs, we fully embrace life again. You can't see it, but I'm wearing a huge scar over here because I was slashed open, I was twisted inside out, I was stitched up again, but I got proud of this scar because it has stitches that are made of friendship, love, and optimism. And I found out that all the cliches and simplicity about resilience is ever so true. So you don't have to, you don't have to experience that again, it is true. Especially one of the quotes of Viktor Frankl is also very true when he says, if we're no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. So the more I worked on my resilience, the more I came to the conclusion that resilience can be the new drug for us that will help us to become more future-proof. Because if you work on your resilience, it gives you the power to be yourself and adapt. Adapt to this ever so fast-changing world we live in, but still be able to stay true to yourself. Because as a generation, we will need to change and adapt. And as human beings, we, are, we have this basic need to adapt to each other. We are very social, friendly beings. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at your neighbor right now. See, we are friendly, social beings. We start laughing to each other. And we are, because we know on our own, we are very, very vulnerable, especially in the beginning of life. We are absolutely very vulnerable. And I remember well, I was like one week old. I was chilling in my crib. I just came from my mama's breast. And then I heard this song written by Benny King in 1961. And I can say it saved my life when he sung. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see no i won't be afraid no i won't be afraid just as long as you stand by stand by me and won't you stand by? Won't you stand by? Stand by. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Because when Benny King is singing, when the night has come and the land is dark, in my opinion, he's singing about the dark times we all face, times when things don't go your way, but we all react differently to. And it's the art of coping and adapting to these difficult situations by learning to handle our emotions such as fear, sadness, frustration and disgust. And Transform them, transform them into more compassionate and constructive actions. And if we do, we can move mountains together. And no, I won't be afraid just as long as you stand by me. We are friendly by nature. We just forget about it sometimes. The second thing that we can develop from resilience is be yourself. And this is quite challenging, especially in our times when it is fashionable and cool to have no time at all. That is why the biggest promise made by technology, by the way, they don't deliver, is that we build apps, we build uh, gizmos and, and, and algorithms that will save you time. Right? So question, who here in the room has loads of free time? Ta-ta. Okay. <laughs> yes, Jacqueline, you're a day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but <clears throat> no, no, because if we look at ourselves from a, from a little di distance, we can see, we can clearly see that we've created a, a society where there's a focus on making money, appearance, and status rather than on building communities and, and close relationships. And this is exactly the conclusion of a study led by Jean Twenge from the San Diego State University on the increase of depressive feelings among young people. 
television, commercials, vloggers, bloggers, Insta, Snapbook is telling you to deny real world, step into this virtual reality where money making, being beautiful, stardom and doing only epic stuff is the new standard. Wait, did you see Will Smith bungee jump from his plane as a gift for his 99th birthday while traveling around the world? I mean, for us mortals, not being able to live up to these standards, yeah, increases depressive feelings. And we shifted the last decades, we shifted the balance from intrinsic to extrinsic goals. Intrinsic goals relate to self-development. Extrinsic goals relate to uh, the, the focus on, on making money, on comparison, and eventually the judgment of others. And we have much less control over these extrinsic goals. I mean, you can work hard, but it doesn't mean you get a good salary. The people that look after our money get paid far more than the people that look after our children, that teach our children, that take care of our sick and elderly. So it's the intrinsic goals that helps you to work on acceptance, on self-reliance, on building a network, on the ability of solving problems, of developing your talents. It can make us more resilient. It made me more resilient. It will make you more resilient. And it can make us, as a generation, more resilient. And on the way, we'll all get scars. Let's stitch them up with friendship, with love, and optimism. And like Viktor Frankl said, if we're no longer able to change the situation, we're challenged to change ourselves. To put it in other ways, Together, we create a bright future for everyone. This will never happen in our society. The largest organizations in this world decide what will happen. Do you really think that decisiveness comes when we dare to look through the eyes of our children? I don't think so. Only when we buy more stuff, things will get better. And those who benefit from it tell us digitization and robotics are far more important than sustainability and care for our planet. This is more than just a lie. We will tell the only truth. The so-called powers that be keep telling us over and over, you will show resilience, you will take care of each other, while the opposite is true. Everyone sticks to their own opinions and possessions. And pessimists who know better are shouting out, nothing will change because people are selfish. We have to be very naive to believe that each individual, each step can help create a world livable for all of us. And this is the truth in a lot of minds, but it's also only one side of the story. Because when we're able to change these things around because we are working on our resilience, would that make a difference? If we work on acceptance, if we work on sharing things together, is it still time to reverse it? And if we reverse it, if we turn it around, should it make a difference? Could we write another story? Well, each individual, each step can help create a world livable for all of us. You have to be very naive to believe that nothing will change because people are selfish. Pessimists who are shouting out are saying that everyone sticks to their own opinions and possessions, while the opposite is true. You will show resilience. You will take care of each other. And the so-called powers that be keep telling us over and over, we tell the only truth. This is more than just a lie. Sustainability and care for our planet are far more important than digitization and robotics. Those who benefit from it tell us that only when we buy more stuff, things will get better. I don't think so. Decisiveness comes when we dare to look through the eyes of our children. Do you really think that the largest organization in this world decide what will happen? I don't think so. This will never happen in our society. Together, we can make a bright future for everyone. And this is another side of the story. And this is my truth. Thank you. Thank you very much.